Have you ever found yourself reading the Bible and then just laugh right out loud? Something just struck you as hilarious. And then upon just a little bit more reflection, that celebration turned into very deep seriousness. There's a passage that always does that for me, no matter how many times I read it. It's found in 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 5 through chapter 7. Specifically chapter 5 verse 13 and chapter 7 verse 3. But we'll get to that in a moment. Let me set the scene, the setting. Solomon has just completed the building of the temple of God. David, his father, had helped him provide for this. And now Solomon has done it. He's lived to see it become a reality. Wow. You might call it one of the wonders of the ancient world, if you please. Now Solomon, as he's about to dedicate it, will be told in chapter 6, the, the chapter between these two that make me smile, of the second longest prayer in the Bible, really, his prayer at the dedication. A prayer that consists really of two things. God, you remember all those promises you made to my father David? Keep them, please. And number two, God, there's all kinds of people that will show up at this place in all sorts of dire situations. Do right by them. Bless them. I love that. Solomon thinks back to the one that's enabled the moment here and now. He stands on his father's shoulders, as it were, as does all of Israel. And he looks to the ones that are yet to come, the future, those that will be standing on his and others' shoulders. All of them, we pray, looking to God. God, do right by them. Be good to them. Love them. Pour out your kindness on them. Give what is best. You know what is best. We want to agree with that. Well, what makes me laugh is in chapter 5, there is this wonderful celebration of anticipation of this dedication of the temple. The priests are there, but especially in focus now is the musicians and the singers for Israel. There's all kinds of instruments at play here. There's harps and zithers and trumpets and more. And the singers are singing their very best. And what are they singing? We're told at least one line, yes, God is good. Yes, God's faithful love lasts forever. And then at that very moment, God shows up. He shows up, as it were, in the form of a, a cloud. At least the glory of the Lord is a cloud. And it fills the temple. And the priests can't even go about their business. Somehow, the people recover enough from all of this experience that Solomon is able to lead that prayer that we read in the cha chapter that follows, in chapter 6. Maybe that's what drives him to be praying for others and to bless them in their need, he along with all the others just realizes how small they are before the God who is so glorious. He realizes his proper place. Israel does too. And then we pick up the reading in chapter 7. Now the Lord sends down fire and it consumes the sacrifices that are being offered there at the temple. And now all Israel, not just the leaders of the, of the gathering, but all Israel now, well, they fall on their face. They look down to the ground. They dare not even look up, much less hands exuberantly raised in praise. And they say the exact same thing their leaders did before. Yes, God is good. Yes, His faithful love lasts forever. I have to smile. Now, why would that make me laugh? Well, because it's, it's one thing to say some things with conviction, but oh, how those things can be brought to a whole different level of conviction in the most remarkable of ways. And we have to smile and then think all the more seriously about it. What do we really believe? What do we really believe about God and ourselves for that matter? What do we believe we need to do as a result? I suspect all those people there, whether they were mus musicians or priests or singers or the king himself, Solomon, or anyone in all of Israel, might have had a level of conviction in expressing those words of God's goodness and enduring love. But after God showed up, 
I'm sure they said it, those same exact words with a very different kind of heart, a very different tone of voice. Suddenly things got a lot deeper for them. Things became much more real, shall we say. I don't know that God shows up with smoke and fire to burn up sacrifices and fill temples today, but I have no doubt that this same God still shows up in oh so many different ways all over the world all the time. I believe I've seen no small number of those things as I look back on my life. I think about convictions that I've had and then God showed up and suddenly those convictions became all the more clear what they really meant or what they should have meant and then what I need to do as a result. Take for example, it's one thing to say that I believe God has conquered death. I believe Jesus has risen from the dead. I believe He is the living hope. He is my resurrection. I'll one day be raised with Him finally and forever. God is good in this way. He's conquered my greatest foe. It's one thing to say those things. And then it's another thing to say those things standing beside the bed of a, a loved one who has passed on, who's given their life to these convictions. They've lived for this God their whole life. They've expressed these things. And now this is where, as the old saying goes, where the rubber meets the road. Do you really believe what you've been saying all this time? Maybe you did. No doubt you did. Perhaps even exuberantly, profoundly. But you'll never be the same after this moment. You'll never be able to get this moment out of your mind. It'll continue to work on you. God will work on you with it, through it. God showed up. You see, He's weaving you, your life, your story, in with the narrative of His story, all that is the book of God. You know, someday the books will be opened. God's books about our life and the books of all that He has had for direction for us. These books will be compared and we will be assessed. What do you believe? What do I believe? And do I believe it to the point that I realize my proper place before the King of all that exists, the one that, who alone is good and eternal, the one who alone truly is real love and is faithful in that love always and forever? I realize my place before Him. And I pray that I realize my proper place before Him, face down before Him, a bit more this coming hour. All the more the next day should He grant me that. Far more the next week if He were to give me that grace as well. I want to be on a trajectory of growing conviction. And I don't want my, my faith to ever become static or stale or that I just settle for the status quo of where I am spiritually. I want God to move me and take me deeper into the true faith that is of Him. I can stand on these two legs, that God is good and that God, His faithful love, lasts forever. With these two things in mind, I can face any situation, no matter how dire. And as long as I don't allow darkness to overtake my mind and to remember that the Lord is a fire who lights the way for me in the darkest of times, well, if I'll remember this, and that I remember that He is the cloud, He is the glory who desires to live in His temple. And you realize those of us who seek God in the name of Jesus Christ are described as the temple of God's Holy Spirit. If I remember these two things, I can walk through life and live a life that pleases Him and that declares and confesses Him to all the world that will watch and care to listen. That yes, God indeed is good. And yes, His faithful love lasts forever. I know because He told me so. And I know because I've seen it in my life and the lives of others with such conviction. 
Think about these things, my friend. Think them about them very seriously. And smile. Grace and peace be with us all.